The first thing, the spirits that come to tabernacle with you, we give you, is what we call wisdom and understanding. Nobody reigns without wisdom. Nobody reigns without understanding. But wisdom is not gotten just by reading a book. In the olden days, when they called a man wise, or when they called somebody a wise man, it's his ability to look into the spirit realm. So Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he said, to gather all the wise men of Babylon. This is not come to read a book and give a speech. If it's about speech giving, politicians would have been the wisest men. But we discover that when they go into office, they are daft. They don't even have an idea of the problem of society. They just came to loot money and go. Meanwhile, the best speeches in the world were given by politicians. They chronicle them like this and they deliver them. But wisdom is not about what you say. It's about the spirit that talks to you and the impact of those utterances. That's why I say wisdom is justified by her children. And so when Nebuchadnezzar called the wise men of old, he didn't call them to deliver a speech. He told them, I had a dream. This is the dream I had. If you are able to tell me the dream, I will know you can interpret it. Now, this is not a speech. And you didn't sleep with him. And even if you slept on the same bed with him, you didn't go to where he went to in his dream. So for you to be a wise man, you must need a spirit to whisper to your ears. So wisdom, therefore, is the spirits that talk to you, the impact that it produces. And so nobody could. Daniel told him, give us time. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. And when Daniel went, the Bible said the dream was given to Daniel. The interpretation and the dream was given to Daniel by a night vision. And when he showed up the next morning, he showed us what it meant to be a wise man. And he said, oh king, this is a dream you had. Now, when somebody comes to you and tells you this is the dream you had, and he tells you you will need them. That's how you exercise dominion. You exercise dominion by accessing what others cannot access. And the only way to access it is to make contact with the spirit that hosts those dimensions. And so when he gave him the dream, he interpreted the dream. Instantly, the king knelt down for him to bless him. So when a man is blessing a king, he's reigning. But what confers that level of authority is wisdom. 90 to 99% of Christians today have no access to the realm of wisdom because they have no access to the realm of the voice of God. When you ask them around major decisions of their life, including the spiritual ones that are in ministry, every step they took is out of assumptions, presumptions, and presuppositions. Somebody said it, they feel this is better than this, so you find believers trying to weigh alternatives. Somebody wants to get married, a banker comes and a carpenter comes, and they say, well, the banker's salary is more. But because he can't hear the voice of his spirit, he can't see tomorrow. And he ends up marrying a banker whose lifespan is five years. And the carpenter he rejects today, five years later, is supposed to become a millionaire. And he has a lifespan of 70 years. How would you tell the, and I'm not saying bankers would die, Kai. <laughs> so wisdom is not how well you can articulate facts. The reason is because facts exist for the present. But wisdom impacts both the present and the future. And that is why men who exercise dominion are men of wisdom. Wisdom is the key that produces authority for dominion. And without wisdom, you can't reign. But you see, the only way you can reign is when a spirit dwells with you because that spirit is what furnishes you with the wisdom. That's why I told you, these are tokens of the first things I listed. When a man begins to live on the altar and spiritual traffic begins to take place, he interacts with different kinds of spirits. And those spirits are the ones that furnishes him with wisdom. When a man purges himself and spirits begin to abide with him, those spirits don't keep quiet. When they come, sometimes somebody is passing, they'll tell you, this man is a bad man. Don't go near him. Meanwhile, the man will come to you with a smile and tell you, I love you, my brother. You have heard a whisper. So even if that man gives you a car, you will run from him. Have you not seen people that gave you money 
But when they are coming to you, you say, tell them I'm not around. The reason is because even though his gesture is, is good, you are hearing a whisper that you can't refuse. That whisper makes you a wise man. As you function on the strength of that kind of wisdom, you will naturally reign from the place of rest. Because every step of your life, there's an instruction that comes from the spirit that you have labored to preserve by altars. Every step of your life, there is a wisdom that you have trapped from the spirit that through purging yourself, you have been able to trap. Because when he told you, somebody offended you, he said, you go and apologize. You wept because he affected your pride. What the spirit is trying to do is to create a foundation for himself to dwell. Because your pride won't let him. When you went to apologize, he pained you. But what you didn't know is that you have trapped a spirit. Because you apologized and you were broken. That, that brokenness became a portal for that spirit to enter your life. You will not know the advantage the day you apologize. The day you apologize, you look like a fool. But three months later, the spirit that you created a portal for will begin to tell you, this business you want to do will fail in three months. Do this one. Everybody is running from that business. You now do it. After six months, the one that was blossoming fails. And then they now look at you and say, how did you know? I apologize when I should be apologized to. And because I apologize when I should be apologized to, a spirit now tabernacles with me. I know these things by experience. When I got married, a new order of operation began to happen in my life. The reason is because before I got married, I existed like a king. From primary school, I came first. I know some of my mates. And you know anybody who comes first in primary school consistently becomes the leader of the gang. Is this strange to some of you? Well, those who come first, they know what I'm saying. When you come first, you become the leader. Everybody follows you. So I got used to people following me from the beginning. Hey, why are you doing this? Get out! Get out! I, I'm a commander. Until when I got married, I couldn't say get out again. That was the first time my things were attacked. Things began to be attacked. Ah, I want to give command. They said, no, this is not one of those in your pack. This one is wife. I started learning to say sorry. Ah, sometimes when I want to say sorry, sorry will be heavy. And I'm not saying 10 years marriage. This is 10 months. <laughs> you don't know how fleshly we can be. When I want to say sorry, I'll not say, where that thing that happened? Sorry. <laughs> God will say, no, it's not like that. Ah! For the first two months, it became a prison. What do you mean? And my wife doesn't argue. She doesn't fight. She'll just be quiet. Her quietness now began to tamper with my conscience. My conscience that I have hid somewhere that nothing can touch. Now, I have somebody in my space that now touches that conscience. God started, God really bullied me the first two months. But while he bullied me, he created the space. I now discovered three months later, I'll go for a meeting as I stand. I'll say, ah, there's somebody on this second row. You have something on your throat. And the person will come out. Ah, is it true? While I'm talking, turning like this, I'll see something like a flash, a screen, a microsecond. I will do it in the evening. It's not there. Uh... <laughs> as I'm as I'm just talking, a, a, a screen will pass. Pop! I'll see somebody with a, a broken joint. He can't lift his hand. And the moment I say, "There's somebody here. You can't lift your hand. Lift it now. It's gone." Ah. I didn't know that those two months that I was being reconstructed. Spirits were coming to dwell. Spirits were coming to dwell. It's when I went out, I saw the manifestation. Now, because those spirits began to dwell, wisdom came. In 10 months of marrying, the things that happened in my life is more than the last 10 years of my life. Because when these spirits of wisdom come, it was those spirits that told me, go to Abuja. Ah, go to Abuja and do what? How do I start in Abuja? As I came, every step by the way, he was leading me. When we started in Abuja, every bee they brought was in millions. It's not one, it's not two, it's not three, it's not four, it's not five million. You see bee of 12 million, 32 million. Ah, what is happening here? <laughs> I wanted to go back and go back to Sokoto because I, in the north is easy for me. But that spirit, I would lie down and say, talk this. You will talk. Somebody will just come for Bible study and say, take $8,000. Because you said something that the Spirit told you. The Spirit will say, go here. I will stand up and go. 
as you you go there somebody who came will just say I, I couldn't sleep God said I should come for this meeting and when they come he will give you an envelope you think it's the usual 50,000 they used to give you when you open it you now see that it's another currency that time you collect it from your protocol officer and put it in your <laughs> the protocol <laughs> protocol can carry iPad with you will put that one here because you don't open that in the public when you go to the hotel you say lock the door you want to kneel down and pray when they lock the door they will check <laughs> here something have changed dominion have come because the whispers of the spirit have begun and when those whispers begin it will take you from nowhere to somewhere it will lift you from a nobody to a somebody because your life becomes a map that you are tracing every step you take is a map into greatness because wisdom is not the gathering of facts in your mind it's the leadership of the spirit that you can now hear his voice in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12 he said wisdom is a defense it's not about information he said it's a defense and he said the excellency of knowledge it giveth life the life dimension that produces dominion is a product of the whispers there are many people that are stranded in life because they can't hear the spirits the reason is because when the spirits came around them and was troubling them every night to erect an altar they wanted to sleep they didn't know that those altars will become gangways through which those spirits will invade their ecosystem those men didn't know when the spirit came and said no they were quarreling say keep quiet don't talk you say no i must defend myself i never keep quiet this man i have never you heard because when that spirit said keep quiet what he's trying to do is to dig into your soul there is a place in your belly that that spirit wants to tabernacle so that it can lord through your life into your ecosystem but when he gave you those commandments you violated it you thought it was about an apology in a dispute it had nothing to do with the dispute you were being drawn into the part of the spirit where you can be taught ancient wisdom that ordinary men don't access many times it's not what you hear in a conference it's the journeys that you travel with the spirits of god that determines the depth of wisdom that you can communicate there are many of you here that God have told you before from 12 to 3 fast and pray and you thought it was a joke it's not about the religiosity your heart is, is, is full of debris he wants to excavate those debris so that he can enter because he's a king he cannot coexist with those garbage in your soul so every time these spirits invade your life with instruction they are creating a, a pathway it's like creating a road for, for a king to drive because he knows that your, your pride will interrupt him. Your fear will interrupt him. Your anger will interrupt him. Your weakness and laxity will interrupt him. So many times it brings technology. It can be giving. It can be prayer. It can be giving you diverse instruction. When he comes there, the sign that he has come is not the feeling. One of the signs that he has come is that you op he opens you up to wisdom. That wisdom makes you invincible. That's why young believers function by feeling when when they do like this ah, ah, they are feeling fire welcome when you feel it for one year you will stop you'll be able to come the first time i started feeling fire in my right hand ah everybody i met i say i'm feeling fire i wanted them to know that i'm a spiritual man i'm feeling fire this fire i don't know this fire after a while the fire became one of the many signs so the goal was not the fire it was what the fire meant so if i'm in a meeting and i feel it i know i can drop the microphone and say lord touch now that's why sometimes i come for a meeting i say stop playing the keyboard stop 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 somebody told me ah we need this sound i found something when that fire is here even if it's in ice block you'll be in cold i can say shut keep quiet everybody sit down i'll say father the people you want to bless touch them now the fire from my hand we engulf the auditorium I don't need to shout I don't need sound but it took something for that fire to come so when you see a spiritual man the reason sometimes you are, they are gathered is because they are trying to interpret signals they are trying to interpret signs sometimes your ears start moving ah, your ears moving what it means a lot of things to you in the spirit somebody may not understand it but 
it is the instrumentality of the spirit of wisdom. When these things begin to happen, you know what they mean. So you become so invincible that men will look at you like a wonder to their generation. One of the tokens that a man has been brought into the realm of dominion is that wisdom is given to him. And wisdom is the voice and the leadership of spirits. Many of you who will receive hunger from this conference, it's not about the 120 day fast you embark on. It's about the product of those fastings. Because as you start that fasting, instructions will begin to come. When you obey that instruction to a point, then you will begin to hear these tokens. And the first token you will see most of the time is wisdom. When wisdom comes, it directs you into greatness. That direction of wisdom is what confers upon you the power for dominion. In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15, wisdom was speaking. He said, by me, kings reign. He said, by me, princes decree justice. He said, the rulers of the earth, they rule by my excellency. That's wisdom talking. So when you find a man of dominion, it's a man vested with too much wisdom. Did you not read about Solomon? David fought 44 battles. Solomon didn't fight one. Because what arrows and bows can do, wisdom can do two times. Because of the wisdom of Solomon, even his enemies were at peace with him. Men traveled from far and wide to come hear the wisdom of Solomon. Have you not noticed that the greatest men in the generation are not necessarily the firemen? Oh, you didn't notice. <laughs> My people told me, I say, it's not every service that is fire service. We need fire to set the generation aright, but we need wisdom to confer greatness and authority. That's why when you go to our fathers, the ones that are leading this generation, go to their meetings, you will discover that the first thing you will identify is wisdom. How they are able to manage their staff. 2,000 staff. Everybody is running as if they want to kill themselves. As if the man is looking at them. It's wisdom at work. The edifice they built, how they came about it, is wisdom at work. You enter the auditorium, 50,000, they are having three services. What do you mean? What are you telling these people? Why are they coming? There's a technology. The spirits have told them things that they have done. And so long as they keep doing those things, the men cannot but come. I studied the life of Bishop Oedipo and I was in wonder. A man left the city. The church in the city was 10,000. He locked the door and he went into a forest. And in the forest, he built 50,000 and they have four services. People are come. The, the, the last time I went to Canaan land, I said, what? I didn't go on a Sunday. There was still hold up. And I began to wonder the kind of pains people go through in order to attend services there. Meanwhile, they do early morning prayer by 6 a.m. And thousands of people defy all kinds of pain to be there. How many of you have woken up 6 a.m. in the last two months? These people wake up sometimes 4.30 just to come there. What is happening is wisdom at work. There are many people raising the dead today that nobody knows they exist. Because they have power, but they don't have wisdom. When a man wants to reign, he must pay the price to come to the realm where the spirits talk to him. If the Holy Ghost doesn't minister to you, angels don't minister to you, you are in trouble. In this life, you will fail. That's why I took time to explain three out of the 12 things that trap spirits in a man's life. Altars. When we pray, it's not a religion. We are insisting that something must happen to our ecosystem. There are too many people that their realm is silent. There are no voices there. And that's why they don't know what to do. But when a man begins to function by wisdom, he says he begins to reign. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15, he said, The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, for they know not how to enter the city. That you are laboring does not mean you succeed, except the ingredient of wisdom is added to it, because reigning in life it's a product of wisdom. It's not just fire. That's why we fight to keep the spirits in our ecosystem. Because they are the custodians of wisdom. They know the secrets of God and they know the secrets of the realm. When they guide you, you can't miss it. It's a true wisdom is an house builder. By understanding, it is established. And it said, by knowledge, all the chambers 
are filled with precious things. There are many Christians today who lack wisdom. And they lack wisdom because they have not paid the price to keep God. Have you not seen people that evaporated their atmosphere with movies? Have you not seen people that evaporated their atmosphere with malice? Have you not seen people that evaporated, diffused their atmosphere with sentiment, gullible sentiment? Because they don't know that their greatest treasure is that atmosphere they created that spirit can easily invade and come away. You can, you can, you can, you can shut out five years of your life just because you lost an atmosphere. Because the spirit that should give you the strategic direction that you should take at that junction, you didn't hear him and you took the wrong turn. And I've said it again and again. If you are in the wrong direction, speed is not an advantage. This is why we cannot afford to miss the voice of God. The voice of God is spiritual wisdom. Any believer who doesn't pay the price to trap him can never reign in life. Forget all this golly booting and born again and the righteousness of God, you are joking. Those are foundations of faith, new creation reality. People are quoting it, they are dying. People are quoting it, they are going nowhere. Because the men who taught you hear their stories. They will tell you, God told me, God told me, God told me. They didn't become great because they are new creation. They became great because in addition to being new creations, they heard the voice of God. They heard the voice of angels. They heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are here quoting your fathers, you're quoting the fathers of faith, and you don't have the kind of rigid experiences they have in the spirit, and you think you can succeed them. We are joking. This is why we pay the price to trap the voice of God. And you can't trap the voice of God unless God is in your ecosystem. When this wisdom comes, you'll be shocked the way he will guide you. There's a wisdom of honor. You are praying to God to promote you. And God is telling you to serve somebody. And then you are trying to rationalize. I'm saying I don't have time. I'm 35 years old. My mates have gone ahead of me. I need you to do something urgent. He said, go and serve this man. Go and honor this man. Will I still go and waste the next four years of my life? <laughs> you don't know the technology. When the hand of God comes upon you, you will outrun the chariots of Ahab. But what you need to do to provoke it is what he's telling you. Because what that man already has, God won't bring it from heaven. He will transfer it from that man to you. So he's telling you, go there and honor him. If you honor him, whether he likes it or not, you'll receive it. Because there's a way to take something from a man, whether he wants to give it or not. Hope you know Elijah never wanted to give Elijah the mantle. But Elisha had honored Elijah too much that when Elijah was going, the whirlwind blew the mantle down. You can't take it anywhere. A man honoring you is on ground. You can't but bless him. This white man reign. And when alien spirits enter our world, they begin to fight divine wisdom. And so we have a godless generation, an irreverent generation. People gather, they think they have revelation of scripture. And they speak against authorities. They speak against powers. And they don't know that they are short-circuiting their possibilities. Because wisdom is lacking. There's a wisdom of giving in this kingdom. You have nothing. You are saving money for your house rent. Your house rent is 400000 You have saved 50000 in six months. And you come somewhere and say, give it to this person. And then you say, what? What I saved in six months... I have four months to deadline. My, 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 my landlord will soon come. And you'll say, I should, what do you want me to be stranded? It's a wisdom at work. He said, give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. You know not the evil that will come upon the earth. In the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thy hand. It's a technology superior to your realm. I'm not talking about zealous giving. I'm talking about men who know the voice of God. And you enter a place and it tells you drop it and you drop it and you go out and in one week you will get what you didn't get in six months and then you are wondering how did this happen because when you obey the voice of God he reprograms nature to your advantage that's why I said you know not the evil that will come upon the earth that means 
even the earth no longer has the power to stop you. If the earth decides to fail, you will still succeed. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. It said, therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. And I came to tell you, wisdom is not gathering facts. It's access to the voice of God. And it will take spiritual labor to trap the voice of God. Praise the Lord. There's a wisdom of humility. The wisdom of humility is what makes men to rise. The lifting of men is a, is a function of humility, not a function of power. You can be so anointed and be in one spot for 10 years.